Okay, next up in our series on Express.js, I want to talk about serving up static files. So what is a static file? You can imagine that there's going to be content that is generated dynamically. If you need to go to a database and retrieve some records and then create the JSON data or the XML data or the HTML content that is going to be sent to the browser, that's dynamic content. Something like a PNG or a GIF or maybe a CSS file, those are static. You are not generating those at the moment in time where the user requests them. Now your CSS may have been built with something like SAS, but that was done long before the user actually sent the request. So static files. With Express, we have a method. It's a middleware method, so we put it inside of app.use, where we specify the folder where we're going to keep all of our static files. Now, if a request comes in, let's say I've got a, a get method here, which is listening for anything at the root, this is going to handle a request for the root. But if we get a 404 error, so if this isn't what the person's asking for, now the static part can take over and Express will go to this folder public. Now you can call it anything you want, I've just called it public, but inside of here, Express will search through here for the files that are being requested. So let's take a look at this in the browser. Let's test this out. Now I've got, uh, let's open up my terminal here. We'll start our server running. We're listening on port 5000. Okay, I'll close that, come back over to the browser. And here's my page listening for 5000. I'll just run that. And there we go. We got the request for localhost 5000, that brought back my default HTML. Now inside of here, there's nothing inside the body other than a little bit of HTML. There's nothing in the head, just HTML. The browser's not requesting any additional files except for one. And inside of here, uh, let me clear this out and redo this, empty cache and hard reload. Okay, so it's not, the very first time you make a request, the browser will, by default, make a request for the favicon. So these little icons that you see up in here, these are called favicons. First time you request the page, the browser is going to say, hey, I don't have a favicon for that. So it sends a request. Now on the server, we're not sending it back. I don't have an app.get listening for favicon. It would be ridiculous to try and build a route for every single static file. That's why we have this plugin it's going to come in here and look for a favicon. Now I have, I just happen to have one here, the favicon. This is one that I've built. I'm going to save it inside my public folder. So we'll go inside of public and we'll save it right here at the root. Now it's just an image file. Oh, it didn't want to do that. Let me try and do it this way. There we go. Okay, so favicon is inside my public folder now. Now, if I come back to the browser, oh, I should restart my server. So let's kill that and start it up again. Jump back into the browser. Empty cache and hard reload. I should get... What I'm gonna do just to try and force this so I'm going to come over here and change my port number. So it's like it's a brand new server. Let's go to 5005. We'll save that. Shut down a server, restart it. Now I'm on port 5005. And this is just going to trick my browser into thinking it's a brand new site. There we go. So now you can see the favicon appeared here. It's probably very tiny if you're using this on a mobile device. It's very tiny. But if I go into the network tab, I can see down here at the bottom, favicon was requested. I didn't do anything different in the browser. The browser is just always looking for this favicon the first time it comes up. We can in the HTML put in a specific, a specific tag to say this is the file that you're supposed to look for. I haven't done that, so I'm just relying on the default behavior in the browser to go search for this. But there it is. The favicon came back up and it was inside of the public folder. Because I was using the Express static middleware, the request came in for favicon. It wasn't in one of my specific routes. So Express went to the public folder, searched inside of here, and said, there you go. There's the favicon, and sent it back. Now, for the content, 
we've got a couple of other examples I'm going to add in here. One, this is the HTML that I'm sending back. I can come inside of here and say, I'm going to request this piece of HTML as well. So I'm putting an image tag inside the main element. That is going to make a request for starting at the root, going to the image folder, cottoncandy.gif. That is going to go into my public folder because there's a 404 for, there's no folder right here at the actual root called image. So Express will look in the public folder, go to the image folder, and that's where it will find this. So if I save it and we restart our server, come back here, hit refresh. There we are. In the elements, now we have this request for the or the image tag. The browser is going to automatically go over and load that image for me. Okay, great. We have that. Now, other files. This one right here, this secret. I've got a link to an HD access file. Now, files that start with a period are supposed to be private files, things that we don't want people to see. I'm going to send a link to this file back, but what I've done inside my options, this is the second parameter here, let me shut that, right here, this options object that we're passing into static, there's a whole bunch of options that we can set. You can see the full list at this link, but we are doing dot files ignore. The three options are allow, deny, and ignore. Allow means let people request them. Deny means send back a, I think it's a 403 unauthorized request. And ignore means pretend they don't exist. So a 404 error. This is probably the most secure thing to do. So the public folder we're creating so that we can put all of our static files in there and have Express search through it. So putting a dot file in there is not something that you would typically have, but just in case you do have a settings file, maybe you've got a .jit folder in there uh, or git folder, um, whatever reason you have to put a dot file in there, you can tell it to ignore it. E tags, these are sort of the hash to help the browser keep track of which version of the file. Extensions, uh, these are ones, so if somebody requests a file, uh, without a file extension name, it will search, it'll try adding these file extensions onto the end of it to see if there's files with those names that exist. Index false means the person can't just put the folder name. They have to give us the file name as well to get something back. It's not just going to say, okay, well, here's everything in the folder. We don't want to do that. Uh, max age. So when does the file expire? Seven days. Redirect. We don't want to redirect back to the root when things aren't found. And, uh, headers function. If you want to set a specific header or multiple headers on every single request, this is how you would do it. And I mean, you can look at the, um, the path for what's being requested and do things that are different for different files. But in general, this allows you to set specific headers on all the static file requests that are going back. All right, so we've added the secret here, the HT access, but we are saying that we're going to ignore. So we're going to give a 404 error. So let's restart our server. Jump back in the browser, hit refresh. There we go. Here's our link now, the secret. This one is pointing to the .htaccess file. If I click on that, there we go. Cannot get this. I'm getting a 404 error. I don't have the file is what the server is telling me. Okay. So let's jump back into our code here. One last thing I wanted to talk about with the favicon. If you are looking to uh, create your own favicon, there's a great website here, favicon.io. And back in the browser, here's the website. If you've got an image, you can upload that and create the icons from that. But I'm just going to show you here, generate from text. Um, what I did to create the little icon that I had was I picked a background color. There we go, Rebecca Purple. I left the text as white. Um, I'm going to have the letter S, and you can choose what kind of background you want. I just went for the default, but there's a circle. You want to change the font family, you can do that. And you can change the font size to say how big that piece of text is inside of there. If you do want to put two letters, you'd have to shrink the font size down. And that's it. You download this, you get a zip file. And back inside of here, there's my zip file. In When I expand that, 
I get a folder called favicon.io, which includes all the different possible types and sizes of the favicons and the icons for Android, for Apple, uh, things that can be defined within the web manifest file if you're building a progressive web app. And I just moved over the favicon.ico. It was in there. I just dragged it into my public folder so I could use it. And that's it. That is how you serve up static files and how you make it useful for either a website or an API. Hope that helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.